With eSports tournaments exploding in popularity and offering eye-wateringly large prize pools, it's clear that making it as a pro player is a demanding career path. But what exactly does it take to be the best? We spoke to two members of Team Liquid's Valorant team. They're the European champions, so they should know a thing or two. To be an eSports pro, you kind of have to dedicate your life to it, for sure. You have to travel quite a lot, you have to play a hell of a lot. There are a few sacrifices you have to make, such as missing family events and so on. So yeah, it takes up a lot of your time, but it, it's so much fun just, just learning, just constantly trying to improve yourself and, and just be better. Valorant is a really unique game. It's like a good blend of the kind of MOBAs, so like League of Legends and uh, Dota, mixed in with FPSs. It's an ever-changing game with frequent updates and new agent releases every few months. Because the game changes so much, you just have to keep on playing. So practicing a lot is really important. Our training in Valorant is comprised of playing many scrims a day and then also going over our matches, seeing what we did wrong and seeing what we can improve on in those certain situations. We practice around six to seven hours a day, sometimes even more when there's tournaments going on. And then for me personally, I play a lot outside of the practice games. I use aim labs to make sure my aim is crisp. I do many different drills such as flicking, tracking, target switching to help me improve my aim and making sure that I can be the best player I can be. The role of a coach within our team is basically to help us come up with new ideas of strats, making sure we use our abilities correctly. He gives us an outside perspective of the match and seeing what we could have done better. I'm constantly watching the players. I'm quite a big believer in just like hyper focusing on little on little things um, and then making sure they, they improve that part of their gameplay. The game at the moment feels a bit more like Counter-Strike in terms of preparing and practicing. You can rely a lot more on the gunplay. Once there's more agents and more abilities in, I think it will get to like the more uh, analytical level that you see in like League of Legends or Dota. He also helps us improve our communication, which is really key uh, for a game like Valorant. It's something that we have to practice quite a lot. We often listen back to our communication and try and work out if we can make calls just faster and quicker. One's pushing A. In terms of competitive matches, as a coach, I get two tactical timeouts where we can pause the play completely and I get to talk to the team and kind of tell them what I believe they should be doing. I do definitely get quite frustrated sometimes not having full control. I've not been a support staff much, so it's actually quite new for me to kind of just watch, um, but I try and have as much impact as possible during the pauses. Team Liquid honestly give us everything. They have a facility in Utrecht, which is a giant facility with apartments above. It has everything we need. It has PCs. We have a professional chef there cooking for us. There's a cinema room for me to do demo reviews. It also provides us with a sports psychologist, which helps us to stay focused within games, give us tips and tricks how to not get down within the games and also just talk out problems within the team. They go above and beyond to make sure that we have everything we need to perform to the best. Hardware is very important. You want to make sure you have one of the best PCs you can to make sure you're not worried about performance hits. You definitely need a good graphics card, a fast processor. It's also really important to have a good monitor with fast response time and a high refresh rate. But like if someone has a monitor that's giving them extra time in terms of frames coming through, like that's an advantage. You want to have the best edge you can have possible. We primarily play on desktops because the screen is a lot bigger. It allows you to be a bit more comfortable in like your position where you place your monitor, your keyboard, and your mouse. We use laptops when traveling to just play games while on the go. The laptop itself has everything to run the game to a really high level. It has an AMD Ryzen CPU, which is really, really good in Valorant right now. Good graphics card and definitely the 240 Hz monitor that's built into it is really good. It's, it's definitely something that I believe is essential. I would choose to use Alienware PCs and monitors if they weren't a sponsor. Just knowing that it's a reliable brand and it's one less worried that I don't need to think about and I can just fully focus on the game itself, it, uh, yeah, it helps. I don't think Team Liquid could be as good as we are without the hardware that we're using. We have to have it. It's, it's one of those essential needs to make sure that we can perform at our best. And knowing that it's always going to be good and perform just takes a lot off our mind. There are no killer features in peripherals these days. It's mainly down to just comfortability. So it's really personal preference on, on what you want to get out of it. So when I'm looking for a new keyboard, there aren't too many must-haves. It's mainly just comfortability. 
I mainly just look for a keyboard that supports the switch type that I'm used to, because keyboards are mainly just uh, what you're comfortable with. For mice, I personally have pushed a torque on the side button, so I prefer side buttons on a mouse. And definitely being able to change the DPI, uh, so you can try and kind of change the sensitivity on the go, is really useful to have. Because we wear them so much, I do think that comfort's definitely a must-have on the headsets. The key things I look for in a headset is to make sure that it has great directional sound. In a game like Valorant, you want to make sure you hear where the footsteps are coming from so that you're able to relay that to your team. I think I started out on speakers. Um, definitely not the best setup for competitive play. Um, definitely a headset has helped a lot more with that. My advice to aspiring pro players is to make sure you always put in the hard work. Talent only gets you so far. You need to put in that extra hard work to get you to that top level. Everyone's always fighting to be the best. You need to make sure you put in the work to achieve that goal. Definitely, uh, you need to have the right attitudes and the right mentality. You need to just constantly realize that you're not going to be perfect all the time and that there is constant improvements that you can make. For more on esports, check out IGN's dedicated esports channel, IGN Compete. And for everything else, stick with IGN.